Hi there, I'm Michael Goodlin with FiddlerShop.com and today we're talking about bridges. No, not the kind you drive over. I'm talking about the ones that are on your instrument. But actually there's a lot of similarities between bridges that we drive over and the bridges on our instrument. For example, bridges typically connect two different areas. And likewise, the bridge on our instrument connects the input, the information from our left hand, the strings, the bow, to the output, the sound that your instrument eventually makes. So it's incredibly important to have a functioning and high quality bridge because all that information, all that data has to pass through your bridge. And yes, we do sell these blank bridges on our website, but you can't just buy this separately and place it on your instrument because it won't fit. It's implied that you own a lot of sharp knives and know how to cut and shape this bridge to your specific needs. Now, just like selecting an instrument or bow, the two main variables in getting a high quality bridge are the quality of materials and the craftsmanship in fitting it to your instrument. Here at Fiddler Shop, we take great pride in sourcing our bridges from high quality suppliers and refining the results to select the best bridge for each instrument. But the cut and craftsmanship of the bridge is probably of greater importance. Every bridge has to be crafted to meet the individual needs of each instrument. The feet must be cut to sit flushly on the top of the instrument. The height of each string and curvature of the bridge must correspond to that of the fingerboard. The bridge must be planed, filed, and sanded to reach the optimal width. The artistry of the luthier is in full display in the carvings of the kidneys and other curvatures of the bridge. Pushing the tonal performance must be in balance with the durability and resiliency of the bridge to stand up under the tension of the strings for years to come. Since the bridge is so important, just a little bit of periodic maintenance can go a long way in preserving the longevity of your bridge. So we most importantly want to make sure that the bridge is staying straight. Because as we keep tightening our strings, the bridge will start to lean towards the fingerboard. And so I always make sure that I'm looking at the tailpiece side, because that will be completely straight. And when you look at it this way, you want to see that it's straight. The fingerboard side of the bridge naturally has some curve to it. It's just, just the way that it's cut, so it's not necessarily warped if you see a little bit of curvature on the fingerboard side. Just pay attention to the tailpiece side. And you also want to make sure that it's straight when you look at it from above, because if it's not straight, it'll be hard to play your fifths in tune up here if your bridge is a little warped and wonky, so will your intonation. You want to make sure that the feet of the bridge are flush against the top of the instrument. If there's a gap or some space there, that's like a car on our suspension bridge falling off and being lost. It's the same that those vibrations aren't being transferred into the body of the instrument and they're not being translated into beautiful music. So that's the story about bridges and why they're so important and why here at Fiddler Shop we work so hard to find high quality bridges and spend so much time in setting each instrument up and crafting each bridge so that it fits every instrument. Our wonderful luthiers work so hard in fitting every bridge to each instrument and getting them all set up so that they sound great and are playable. We look forward to setting one up for you at FiddlerShop.com.